millions of people are infected with the virus across over 200 countries and territories around the world. And it was caused by a cover-up in one country. They threatened the doctors, tortured the doctors, made the doctors shut up. They tried to cover up the outbreak. They lied to the world in the very end. We can't control anymore. They need blood to fuel the CCP tumor. And that blood is dollars. Wall Street is indeed helping the CCP and strengthening it. Be careful raising a baby tiger, because one day it will grow up and eat you. Let's start with Wall Street. The CCP virus began to spread in New York in early March, yet Wall Street did not shut down. Even into April, some JP Morgan Chase traders in New York were required to work despite the pandemic and despite an outbreak at their offices. One manager director on the fifth floor developed symptoms on March 9th and subsequently tested positive. In the following three weeks, about 20 employees were infected with the CCP virus, and 65 others were quarantined. J.P. Morgan Chase is an old friend of the CCP. In 1973, Chase Manhattan was the first American bank to act as an agent of the Bank of China in the United States, six years before the two countries established formal diplomatic relations. Led by J.P. Morgan Chase, Wall Street has channeled huge amounts of money to the CCP over the past 40 years. J.P. Morgan Chase launched the Sons and Daughters hiring program in 2006, hiring about 100 children of powerful Chinese officials to help the bank win billions in business contracts with China. The large Wall Street banks and other large American in name only companies were more interested in making as much money as they could by trading with a mortal enemy than in abiding by American laws and American standards and upholding American values. I'm sure if you dug around and looked around, you'd find that J.P. Morgan wasn't alone in that kind of practice. J.P. Morgan Chase later admitted the Sons and Daughters program violated the U.S. Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, FCPA, and it's paid more than $200 million in settlements to avoid further investigation and prosecution. Through the exchange of benefits, the Western companies get special treatment from the parents of the second generation of Reds. In return, they are plainly using their power for money. Western values have had little influence on the CCP, while many Westerners have learned the values and bad behaviors of the CCP. Jamie Dimon, CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, is the chairman of a powerful lobby, Business Roundtable. Dimon strongly opposed increasing tariffs on Chinese products in 2018 when the White House imposed measures amid the trade war. The measures were aimed at stopping the CCP's trade practices that undermine the global trade order. And, you know, we should try to be friendly and understand their problems. And, and Diamond is not alone. The elites on Wall Street have frequently lobbied for Beijing and Washington over the past few decades. The Tiananmen Square Democratic Movement was bloodwashed with tanks and machine guns in 1989 by CCP troops. After the Tiananmen Massacre, the West imposed strict sanctions against the Chinese regime. Whether to make China's most favored nation status conditional on human rights was repeatedly debated in Congress, but the U.S. granted China the status every year in the 1990s. There was also a, a view that if we had better relations with China, a stronger, more self-confident China, it would be an international stakeholder. I remember talking points 
that also it would open up China. If China was wealthier, it would move in the direction of democracy. This was the way that we could overcome the human rights advocates in Washington. In 2000, Robert Rubin, then U.S. Treasury Secretary with a Wall Street background, facilitated the Clinton administration's support for the CCP to join the World Trade Organization. If it had gone with a general moral standard, the U.S. should not have cooperated with a regime like the Chinese Communist Party. For example, we all know that South Africa had an apartheid system, but under strong pressure from the American people, American and other Western companies withdrew their capital from South Africa. This divestment actually led to the collapse of the apartheid regime and resulted in true democracy in South Africa. Now, American companies are obviously less concerned about human rights issues in China. That is, lower tariffs on a permanent basis rather than on an annual basis contingent on its making progress in human rights. This decision will go down as the most consequential and the most dangerous mistake in history. This resulted in a transfer of wealth from the United States and from Western industrial democracies to the communist tyranny. After Wall Street helped China enter the WTO, big corporations started shifting production lines to China to take advantage of cheap labor. Then they sold the goods back to the United States. This caused the U.S. trade deficit with China to rapidly increase from 83 billion in 2001 to nearly 420 billion in 2018. Meanwhile, the United States lost 3.7 million jobs. 75% of them were in manufacturing. And the rest of the West, uh, moving manufacturing, uh, banking, you know, we, we moved manufacturing, showed them how to manufacture, uh, gave them our best practices in the plants. Uh, we helped them with their laboratories. Uh, so we've basically taught them all the ropes that we know from an economic perspective, but you have to understand from the Chinese Communist Party perspective, it's like, give us all this information, give us all this technology, give us all this know-how so we can learn how to unwind you and to weaken you. Every major American industrial corporation outsourced and moved its industrial production to China. Maybe not 100% of it, but a good piece of it. They saw replacing well-paid American labor with cheap Chinese labor boost their stock price. They were driven to do this by the Wall Street financiers. They squeezed American companies to move offshore as a way to boost share price, uh, to boost profitability. And this was, on one hand, Wall Street's direct culpability in our dependence on China and the gutting of American manufacturing. The CCP's exports have increased by about seven times, and its GDP has increased by more than four times since its entry into the WTO. The CCP has also obtained the financial power to expand its global political influence. As we know, many of these enterprises are actually foreign exchange earning oriented enterprises that export to the United States and Europe, including the United Kingdom. The foreign exchange obtained by these exports is actually compulsorily purchased by Chinese state-owned banks. They give the Chinese companies the same amount of RMB and they keep the foreign currency in the hands of the Chinese government. Then the CCP uses this foreign exchange reserve as a tool for international exchanges that threaten the United States, for example, to support Iran, North Korea, and Venezuela. Every time, in good faith, we extend them an opportunity to join our trading organizations and to take part in uh, world commerce, uh, they do just the opposite. They exploit the institutions that we put in place. Uh, they steal our technology. They extort our businesses who try to open up uh, in, in work and in, in have access to their markets. And at every turn, they're working against and undermining our way of government and our way of life. China has not developed along the planned trajectory, 
Global Freedom Indexes once again ranked China as one of the lowest in the world in 2019. Wall Street helped the first Chinese company, state-owned Brilliance Auto, get listed on the New York Stock Exchange in October 1992, three years after the Tiananmen Square Massacre. Soon, companies from mainland China came to America one after another. As of February 25, 2019, there were over 150 Chinese companies listed on U.S. exchanges with a total market capitalization of $1.2 trillion. The top three are Alibaba, followed by two energy companies directly owned by the communist regime, PetroChina and China Petroleum and Chemical. Remember, any Chinese company is controlled and completely trolled, controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. Companies are not owned by, by investors and run by board of directors in, uh, in China. The CCP absolutely controls it. And the larger the company, the more CCP uh, slash executives are, are controlling that company. And as China grew more wealthy, and they started to develop their own indigenous companies and own indigenous industries, they turned to the Wall Street investment banks like Goldman Sachs and others to be listed on American stock exchanges. There was a problem there in that these Chinese companies don't play by the same rules that American companies play by. They don't open their books. China does not allow U.S. regulators to audit its company's books. The Chinese government claims these are state secrets and thus cannot be shared with the outside world. This exposes American investors to unprecedented risks. In 2015, George Vlahas, an 84-year-old retired educator from Massachusetts, pleaded with Xi Jinping, who was about to visit the United States, and asked him to give a little hope to investors in America who have suffered losses. Vlahas purchased Sino Clean Energy stock, which was delisted by NASDAQ due to filing delays for its quarterly report with the Securities Exchange Commission. As a result, Sino Energy's share price fell from a 2010 high of $10 to $0.05 cents in 2015. Vlahos lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. He said that if he doesn't get his money back, he will leave the world with unforgivable crimes, forcing his 76-year-old wife to seek low-income assistance, all because he believed these companies. I was told literally by one particular uh, member of Congress, he said, you know who was sitting in that seat uh, yesterday in your very seat telling me why Chinese companies don't need to be uh, adhering to the same standards as U.S. companies? And I said, who? He said, the head of the Chinese Securities Regulator, uh, Regulatory Commission, the CSRC, the Chinese version of the SEC. He was lobbying U.S. Congress members sitting in their offices, explaining to them that it's a national secret that every person and every audit within any Chinese SOE is a state secret and therefore it can't be audited. When a Wall Street investment bank advises a Chinese company for its public offering, the bank earns a 3% to 7% underwriting fee on all funds raised. The bank is then responsible for conducting due diligent investigations into the financial records of these Chinese companies. However, disasters happen frequently. Luckin Coffee, China's largest coffee chain, admitted on April 2, 2020, that 40% of its 2019 sales were fabricated. Luckin had been listed on NASDAQ for less than a year. The next day, Luckin Coffee's share fell by 80%, and investors suffered heavy losses. Underwriters of Luckin include Morgan Stanley. From 2011 to 2012, over 50 Chinese companies listed in the United States were suspended or delisted due to financial fraud or non-compliance with trading rules. Actually, almost all Chinese companies have two accounting books. It is quite rampant to keep fake accounts in China today. 
It happens almost everywhere in China. It is so common that I think all Western companies operating in China know about it. And everyone's going to live by the same rule of law. If we did that, 95% of Chinese companies couldn't be listed here, maybe 99%. Wall Street companies, banks, Big Four, uh, other management consulting companies uh, were complicit in the run-up of the Chinese Communist Party. Wall Street has been pushing capital continuously into China's stock and bond markets, in addition to helping Chinese companies get listed on the U.S. stock exchanges. J.P. Morgan Chase also included CCP government bonds into the J.P. Morgan GBIEM Global Diversified Index on February 28, 2020. According to Goldman Sachs calculations, the inclusion could funnel $3 billion in foreign capital into the Chinese bond market every month. A Bloomberg Barclays index started including domestic Chinese bonds, and some of MSCI's indexes increased the weighting of Chinese domestic stocks. These indexes are tracked by asset managers around the globe, who they seek to replicate the benchmark's holdings. This would draw hundreds of billions of dollars into Chinese financial markets. We also know that the Chinese Communist government has constantly exerted pressure on MSCI to increase the weight of Chinese enterprises. The Chinese Communist Party uses this to create the illusion that China's economy is thriving. The illusion has been used in exchange for the legitimacy of its regime and to attract more funds from other countries. In other words, in fact, these index companies are unknowingly, passively, and even actively participating in the CCP's deception of the world. One MSCI index includes 234 Chinese A-share companies, companies listed on Chinese stock exchanges. The companies include Hikvision, that provides surveillance cameras for Xinjiang concentration camps, and state-owned AVIC, Shenyang Aircraft Company Limited, which manufactures fighter jets for the CCP military. Meanwhile, the CCP military regards the U.S. military as its number one imaginary enemy. And they call us their enemy. And they say that they are at war with the United States and the West. When you look at who owns those stocks, and they are completely owned by the Chinese Communist Party, and what they stand for, which is oppression, human rights violations, and so on. Now, the management of the Federal Retirement Thrift Investment Board has decided to track the MSCI index. This means that a portion of the $600 billion managed by the organization will flow into Chinese stocks providing funds to companies that endanger U.S. national security and help the CCP suppress human rights. They're building the facial recognition software for the techno-totalitarian surveillance system that the Chinese Communist Party needs to maintain its grip on power and which it's now exporting to other countries around the world. These are the kind of companies that American capital, American dollars are being fed into by Wall Street bankers. The support from Wall Street for the CCP has obviously made it possible for the CCP to spread its ideas of communism and spread the way it governs to the world and endangered the world. MSCI indexes also include the Chinese company Tencent, which owns the social media giant WeChat. WeChat has long helped the CCP monitor dissidents. During the epidemic, several doctors in Wuhan were suppressed by the police after exposing the truth of the virus's spread on WeChat. Kind of laying from the beginning of the process, their cover-up, um, how they went and imprisoned scientists who dared speak the truth, how they destroyed samples, how they lied to the world, to the WHO, uh, to the United States, and really allowed this thing to grow into something that, in the very end, we can't control anymore. We're just reacting to on a, on a worldwide level. America's political and economic elite once held that helping China's economic development would eventually make the Chinese Communist Party change its pattern of behavior. 
Has the nature of the CCP changed over the past 40 years since the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and the United States? China has not become more democratic. It has not become more peace-loving. And it has not become more Western. It is deeply hostile to the United States and to Western values and the values of Western civilization. The people in the Communist Party ruling elite of China are highly nationalistic and they dream of a world in which the Chinese Communist Party's totalitarian power is extended on a global scale. The CCP is the most brutal regime in the world. It has murdered over 65 million Chinese people under its various political campaigns, according to estimates in the Black Book of Communism. This death toll exceeds the sum of both world wars. The causes of death included political cleansing, the Great Famine, and the Cultural Revolution. Beginning in the 1990s, the Chinese Communist regime, with the help of Western funds, has transformed itself into an economic power and moved toward its dream of dominating the world. In the past few years, thousands of Christian churches have been demolished. A mass number of Uyghurs have been imprisoned in Xinjiang's concentration camps. And an independent international tribunal in London ruled that the Chinese Communist Party has, for decades, been running a large-scale organ transplant industry, using organs harvested from prisoners of conscience, such as Falun Gong practitioners. It's actually crazy what they do. And again, we give them passes. Can you imagine if you explain to someone that you're doing business uh, with a regime that has more than a million prisoners of conscience um, locked up and is, do, and is executing live organ harvesting on this population of political prisoners on a daily basis. You have to understand Chinese communism is extremely evil, extremely evil. And you've got this history of human rights violations and then you have a strategy uh, that is a war founded or a war placed strategy against the West. So why would you ever, if you understood that, why would you ever want them part of a world trade organization so the Chinese also, the Chinese Communist Party has a saying, be careful raising a baby tiger, because one day it will grow up and eat you. We have to realize that the Chinese Communist Party exists on a steady flow of US dollars. Its own currency is akin to toilet paper. It can't be traded on international exchanges, it has no value. They survive and thrive on a constant influx of American dollars. The CCP covered up the truth at the beginning of the epidemic. As a result, about 5 million people left Wuhan before the city was locked down on January 23rd. About 60,000 of that 5 million went to 382 cities around the world. At least 834 ended up testing positive for the virus, resulting in the global disaster. Coronavirus pandemic is already... Preliminary data shows that... As of early May, more than 1 million people have tested positive in the United States, and more than 70,000 people have died. The deaths caused by the CCP virus is several times greater than the total deaths in Pearl Harbor and 9-11 combined. New York has become the hardest hit in the United States with more than 300,000 confirmed cases and more than 20,000 deaths. The CCP virus has infected the entire world. And the root cause is the infectious nature of the Chinese Communist Party itself. To be free from the virus, you need to be clear that the party itself is poisonous and rejected. That the Chinese government is not trustworthy, they're not our friends, and one could deem them to be our mortal enemy. And at some point in time, I think Wall Street's view is going to have to change. And I think it's happening now. And it's, it's really a, an awakening for everyone who is not familiar with the CCP in the past. They're certainly familiar with the CCP current day. At the Federal Hall National Memorial in Manhattan, across the street from the New York Stock Exchange, the statue of President Washington gazes at this wonderful land of wealth at his feet. Over 200 years ago, 
when President Washington took the oath of office here, he stated that the foundations of our national policy will be laid in the pure and immutable principles of private morality. He said piously, since there is no truth more thoroughly established than that there exists in the economy and course of nature an indissoluble union between virtue and happiness, between duty and advantage, between the genuine maxims of an honest and magnanimous policy and the solid rewards of public prosperity and felicity. Since we ought to be no less persuaded that the propitious smiles of heaven can never be expected on a nation that disregards the eternal rules of order and right, which heaven itself has ordained. For more than 200 years, the United States has been regarded as a beacon and hope by people around the world seeking freedom. Wall Street not only represents this short, narrow street, but is also synonymous with the U.S. capital market and world financial center. Wall Street has carried many American dreams since the Gilded Age. The limit of dreams is probably the starting point of greed. The pandemic has paused everything in this magnificent, charming, and glorious capital. At this challenging, special time, people need to ponder whether they want to dance with the devil or walk with gods.